By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim. Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we have magic for you from the Knights of Thorn tournament in Deventer, the Netherlands. And this is the sixth edition of these, uh, this tournament. It's the oldest old school tournament that I know of, at least, that takes place in the Netherlands. It's also the biggest. More than 50 contenders have joined uh, for this tournament. And this is a round one match, the first match of the tournament on the live stream here. On the left, we have a player who's playing blue with artifacts that's basically all i know uh, about his deck and on the right we have a player that plays green blue mid-range with a splash of black and the black splash is probably because of um, the options for demonic tutor and mind twist but you know we'll see who knows maybe he has a surprise for us there and we are also playing according uh, to the uh, Swedish rules, but the players are allowed to play with 10 reprints and we are playing according to the London Mulligan rules. So let's see how that is going to work out. Not sure who gets to start here. And here we see the player on the left. Oh, they've both taken a mulligan here. So there you see that London Mulligan rule. So they're looking at their seven cards again, and then they have to put one on the bottom of the library and they don't get to scry. You're a pretty good opening from the player on the right here with that mox allowing him to play that uh, two one creature there from the antiquities, the pixies. And it's a two one and it has protection from artifacts, or I should say the damage done by artifacts is reduced to zero. And there's a pretty aggressive start here. So the player on the left is already down to 15. He's playing a library of Alexandra here, which is nice. But on the other hand, there's a lot of damage that his opponent is representing right now. So if he has the time to kind of get his library going, that's the question. Already six damage in here, going down to nine. Maybe drawing his card number seven here and able to activate. Of course, he had that mulligan. So that is also costing him a card. Playing an island here, so I guess he doesn't have the cards. Oh, and this is pretty cool. It's, <laughs> it's okay, this I have to look this up. It's it's the apprentice wizard. It's a zero one creature from the dark. It's a zero one, like I said, for three mana, two blue and one. And when you pay a blue and tap it, you get three generic mana. I think for now it's just gonna be a chum blocker. And that's exactly what it does. So he's get he gets three more damage here. And he's already on five life, playing a workshop. So he needs something big here. Maybe a Triskelion. I don't know. That's not going to save him. No, and that's the first game that's, that went by rather quickly. So both players are now going to sideboard and we'll be right back with game number two. Game number two with the blue player on the play. Uh, and we haven't really seen... A lot from both of these decks that was a very quick game uh, and hopefully the uh, the blue player boarded something in against the aggression but it looks like he's taking another mulligan so like i said in the first game we're doing london mulligan rule and how that works um, he now decides to take a mulligan he gets to draw seven cards and instead of six he gets to draw seven but he has to pick one of those cards and put it at the bottom of his library and he doesn't scry now if he chooses to uh, take a mulligan again it means that he, he can take seven cards again but then he has to go down to five and so on so look at yeah so he's taking it i just thought he took another mulligan but he's not oh and he's actually letting the his opponent start here this is very interesting so this this game's like this deck i mean is like a mystery to me here unfortunately his opponent is starting with a library of alexandria um so that's pretty problematic playing a another island passing turn here and his opponent is now just drawing cards like a madman there's a tropical island already on the board a library of alexandria there tapped because of the mana an underground sea being played and that means that both players are now capable of playing counter spells and let's see what's going to happen next he has a third island here passing turn playing probably gonna use the no gonna Choose to use the library at the end of the turn of his opponent. There's a Mock Sapphire. And another card drawn. There's not a lot happening yet. I'm pretty surprised here. Four mana. If you don't count in the Library of Alexandria right now to use. And there's the Pixies again. There are Govian Pixies and there's no counter spell here. 
So that spell resolves, so there's a creature on the board. And obviously when you're the Library of Alexandria player, you don't really mind going slow because you just keep getting more and more cards and um, so you're getting ahead more and more. And there's a crumble on the Sapphire. And the opponent seems to be stuck here on three islands. Didn't play his uh, land number four. Taking two damage from the Pixies. At least he has enough mana now to play the Apprentice Wizard, you know, looking at it from a positive point of view. And another Pixies here. Playing island number four. And passing turn again. So I'm, I'm really puzzled about this deck, like what the function is. All we've seen so far is a wizard, an apprentice, and a few islands. So, and he takes another four damage here from the pixies, going to 14. And he has tons of cards and tons of mana now. So is he going to do something? Or maybe he just thinks, you know what? It's good enough. I'll just pass turn. And we'll just have to wait and see here. And there's a control magic, at least an attempt. There's the Library of Alexandria activation, two blue, probably a counterspell here. And yes, that's a counterspell. So that's being countered. And he passes the turn again. Activating his city here, taking a damage, playing a Psy Blast. So he's going to 10, and that means that he's going to 17. So we don't see him changing his life count, but he's on 17. And he's attacking again, dealing four damage here. And this is looking grim once again for the player with the blue artifact deck. And I have no idea um, what cards he drew, but they must have been miserable because we haven't really seen his deck doing anything in these two games. And there's a pixie attack again, and he's going to two life. And there's a side blast, and that's game. So, wow, I mean, this must, must have been the easiest victory on a tournament that I've seen in a long time, you know. Of course, sometimes you have these games where your opponent doesn't draw any land or uh, only draws land. So, But if I don't include those matches and I'm just looking at, um, you know, at regular games, then wow, this was really an, uh, an easy victory here. But hey, congratulations to the player on the right. You've got your first victory here at round one. And I'm curious uh, to see what other matches we're going to see here at the Knights of Thorn tournament in David, the Netherlands. Um, if you keep an eye on the channel, uh, you can actually see more games being featured. And I see here that the players are going to continue to play a third game. And you know what? Why not? Let's have a look and see what's going to happen in that third game because we haven't really seen anything off the deck of the player on the left. It's a complete mystery. So hopefully we'll see a little bit more in this third game. So there are two islands here and there's a workshop there in the corner. And there's a factory. And luckily, later in the tournament, I managed to get a better um, view with the webcam. As you can see, you don't see the whole uh, player area right now. But for the matches that I'll be uploading later of the games here at Knights of Thorn, uh, you'll have a much better overview. But unfortunately, the, the, the first game, there were some, um, the first match, I should say, there were some problems with the, uh, with the webcam. And that's why you only have this limited picture of this first match. Um, so four damage being done again by the player on the right. We haven't actually seen the blue player um, doing any damage. So maybe he can manage to do uh, damage now. And there is a Chaos Orb. And there is a mana drain on the Chaos Orb. That does mean that he has two extra mana next turn. And there's a counter spell on the mana drain. Ay, 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 ay. That is brutal. And the Library of Alexandria there is being flipped on. And in all honesty, I didn't even see that he had it on the board. Like I said, unfortunately, we didn't have or we don't have a good view of this. Uh, first match luckily for the second third fourth and fifth match that we'll be featuring 
um, we do have a much better view. And there is a hypnotic specter. So I was talking about a black splash earlier, but I guess it's more than just a splash if you're playing with hypnotic specters. So interesting, interesting decks, both of them and, or I should say they seem interesting. I don't know a lot about them. And there's the Apprentice Wizard again. I would love to see the idea of this Apprentice Wizard. I would love to see it in action, actually being used for his ability. Because what you can do, you can make an island into a, uh, into a workshop. That's basically what you can do. For one blue, you get three generic mana. So it's not that bad. And especially when you're playing with artifacts, um, it can be very useful, or with X spells for that matter. But for now, there's another attack by the factory. And there, of course, when you play with green, you see it a lot. It's the Urnum Jin 4 5 Forest Walk creature. Um, or actually, it doesn't have Forest Walk, it gives another creature Forest Walk. And there's a counter spell after kind of looking at the card for, for a little while. I think that's a good decision because he's already down on 12. And that 5 toughness, I know from experience, is just really hard to beat. And there's an Ornithopter here and a copy artifact. And it looks like he's copying the Soul Ring. And oh, that explains why he's doing it. And then he's playing a Time Twister, but there's a Counterspell. And it's just too bad of the Counterspell, because I, I would love to see some more of this blue artifact deck. It looks very interesting. And he's tapping a lot, playing a Brain Geyser. Oh, that's just a killer. That's I mean, you're tapping out to play your, your Time Twister, and then your opponent counters it and plays a Brain Geyser. That is pretty tough. Playing a Mox Sapphire. I already like this third game much more than the other two games that we've seen. At least this is more of a game. But still, I, I mean, this art blue artifact deck is a mystery to me. I haven't seen any actual toughness on the board. I'm hitting him for, for four damage here. He's going down to eight. Playing another Urnum Jin. And that means that next turn he'll, he'll have to start jump blocking unless he does something now. Playing a Transmute Artifact. So that's a card from the Antiquities. For two blue, you can sack an artifact and then you can look uh, you can look up another artifact. Oh, this is cool. A Colossus of Sardia. This is very cool. Oh, and his player is pointing out to him that he cannot use his workshop to cast it because it's not being cast it's going through the transmute artifact so he cannot use the mana of the actual workshop wow but anyway luckily he has enough mana and now we can see the apprentice wizard in action so super cool we have a colossus of sardia on the field here ladies and gentlemen and this is awesome that's a 9-9 powerhouse and he could give it force walk he's not going to but that would be cool and he's taking something back, probably just to remove. Yeah, taking the Chaos Orb, and he's going to flip on the Colossus. Boo! Oh, and he just hits it. Yes, I'm sorry I'm booing, but, I mean, he, he's putting in so much effort to just to cast this um, Colossus of Sardia. And now he's uh, he's flipping it away there with the Chaos Orb. Good flip, good flip, good for you. And uh, it's an 0-3 uh, victory here. But now, that third game, we kind of saw the idea of this deck i think it's a very very cool deck um does it work nah, you know okay not really but it looks very cool very spicy indeed and i kind of like this uh this brewing you know you, I, I believe you don't see enough uh, original builds these days so it's very cool to see this uh, this blue apprentice deck but man oh man did it get um did it get you know shot down definitely um Thank you for watching this episode of uh, Timmy Talks of the first round of the Knights of Thorn in Daventer, uh, the Netherlands. And uh, if you'd like to see more of this tournament, because we have a lot of more games coming up and also some very close matches, I can tell you that already. Uh, keep an eye on the channel because we will be showing you the first five rounds. And I believe we also have a top eight match for you as well. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. It helps me as well. Also leave a comment, leave a like, let me know what you think of this first game and this interesting uh, blue artifact deck. Um, I mean, I, I'm still 
curious about how this whole thing works. Anyway, thank you for watching this episode and see you next time. Ikitus, ikitus, somba, kazi.